Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you guys a review of the Nook HD Plus. Uh, so this is the first 9-inch uh, e-reader from Barnes & Noble. Uh, they also have the 7-inch version. So this is the Nook tablet, just to give a kind of an idea of the size difference. This is the uh, one from last year. It's got a skin on it. That's why it looks weird. But uh, it sort of has the same design. Uh, unlike the Nook HD, the regular 7-inch uh, one, it has the rounded corners. It kind of has a different design than the uh, HD Plus here, which sort of goes off the, off the design of the older models with the little... Uh, it's got that little uh, weird hole right here, and we've also got the end button as usual. And then on the back, we've got a speaker down here, and we've got a micro SD card uh, slot. It's hidden right here. You can just take this little deal off, and it's uh, behind the slide back there. And then we've also got this uh, proprietary connector uh, for connecting to your computer and for charging the device. It does not have the, uh, u the regular port like it had before. So, and then on top, we've got uh, volume buttons, and there's a microphone notch right there, and then there's a headphone jack. And then there's the power button on this side, and that mm, that uh, wraps up all the buttons on the device. Uh, everything else is done on screen. Uh, so we've got a new user interface this year. Uh, at the older Nooks uh, has the, were based on Android 2.3. This is uh, actually based on Android 4.0. Okay, so this is a look at the home screen layout for the Nook and the Nook HD. You just go like this. You can go ahead and scroll through your different pages. You can add different icons on here. So this is sort of like a carousel, sort of like the Kindle has, but you can go ahead and get rid of this if you want. Um, you can also use this to like uh, move content. So if you wanted to add like a ebook right here, you can just drag it right off. Uh, same sort of deal if you want to remove it. You can uh, hold long press on that. And we can change different wallpapers. Uh, so there's some cool different setups in here. Uh, there's more of a traditional Android home screen. And we can uh, add different app icons. You can add your uh, uh, access to your own files. And we've got different apps. Uh, you can put all your app icons on here. Uh, there's different wallpapers. And there are even some live wallpapers. Uh, so you can change things up a bit. Um, so we've also got, as you can see, there's this menu bar down here. I hit back right there. The back button only appears when there's an option for it. Okay, so you can also add like individual web pages on here. We can uh, do the web page bookmarks. The only thing with them is they're so incredibly tiny, it's kind of hard to tell uh, when you put them on here which web page it is. Uh, but the high resolution screen on this, so the high resolution screen is definitely the uh, Nook HD Plus's best quality. And uh, you can actually even see the little tiny uh, uh, writing in these uh, little bookmarks right here. So we can go ahead and remove these if we want. Uh, one weird thing about these bookmarks is they seem to change sizes all the time. Uh, see, look at these ones, they're all big, the, the same exact thing. Sometimes these ones will change to that small size, uh, and so this one's a little bit wider and shorter. I, I don't know what the deal is with those things, it's kind of strange. Uh, the manual, uh, the user guide actually talks about widgets being available for the home screen, uh, but that uh, actually isn't available on here. I wonder if they're going to add that in a firmware update or something, because, uh, yeah, obviously there's no widgets here right now. But uh, some of the other uh, interface options, so we can run searches right here pretty much uh, anytime you want, so like if you're in a different app, um, you'll still have like the search bar down here, the little search icon. And as you can see, you can save web pages offline over here. Uh, I really like the web browser. The web browser is probably one of its best qualities. I've been using this thing for browsing the web uh, like crazy lately. So uh, it's definitely uh, good for web browsing. I haven't really had many issues. I've had a couple of crashes, but uh, for the most part, it's a really solid web browser. And I kind of like using portrait mode. You just get so much content on the screen, you can actually easily read those. I doubt it's going to show up on the camera, but in person, with the high resolution screen, it's easily uh, readable when the text is this small. And if you hold down on something, you get the usual copy and paste icon. You can also drag, and then um, if you want to do a web search, you hit this icon right here, and it says web. It's actually cut off, but it says web search. Um, I think it shows web search if you use it in uh, landscape mode here. Yeah, it does. It actually says the whole web search right there, so it's kind of just cut off in uh, portrait mode. So, uh, as far as the... Um, oh, we've got this recent apps little list down here, too. So there's this little icon at all times down here on the menu bar. You can pop that up, and we get the recent apps, and it also shows your recent titles that you've had access. So it's not just apps. You can just jump to recent ebooks, uh, stuff like that as well. So that's kind of a cool little deal. Um, like I said earlier, you can run searches from here as well. So uh, the uh, web browser has article view, where it just removes like all the extra content and just breaks it down uh, like so. So uh, that's a pretty cool feature as well, and you've got the different font sizes. So I really do like the web browser. I think the BNN did a good job as far as the web browser goes, because uh, it's a lot better than you're going to get on the older Nooks. So up here we have this little notification thing. When you get new notifications, it'll tell you up here, I have the worst time getting this thing to work right. I'm always tapping it, 
hey, it actually worked on the second try. That's a big shocker. Usually I have to hit it like 20 times before it works. But uh, So that's where your notifications, like if you get emails or something, it'll pop up notification right there. And so like I said earlier, we can move all our app icons onto our home screens. And the home screens actually work in uh, landscape mode as well, unlike the earlier nooks. They do kind of overlap a little bit, like on these icons right here. But for the most part, it works pretty well. So we've got this little Your Nook Today thing up here. If you tap that, it brings up like your day's weather. It's not really very useful, and it just shows you uh, like recommended titles. But it just keeps saying the same stupid recommended titles over and over again when I scroll through these. So I don't know what the deal is with this. And it doesn't give you any like five days, so it's kind of annoying as far as that goes. But it's, uh, it could be better, that's what I'm saying. So one thing I uh, like about this tablet is it's designed uh, for larger form content like the magazines and the comics. This is a Spider-Man comic sample that I uh, went ahead and downloaded just to see how it looks on here. And it does look really, really good on the screen. Uh, the comics just fit the screen size really well. Like these uh, text balloons are really e readable in person. I doubt they'll show up on this camera, but as far as the, the comics go, I mean, it just uh, seems to fit the screen perfectly. And as you can see, we've got the animated page turns. Uh, so that goes with ebooks too. So as far as magazines and comics, I think they look really, really good um, on the Nook screen. So here's another one. So these aren't even actually even designed for the HD screen, but they still look uh, really good. The colors are just really bright. I don't know. I just think it looks really, really good for comics and magazines. So as far as e-reading goes, it's pretty much the same sort of setup you've got on the older Nooks. We've got the same sort of uh, text adjusting options, basically. So if we pop this up right here, we've got a page slider. you got this little thing where you can go back, which is kind of cool. If you're jumping around, it tells you the go backs right there. You can enter a specific page. Of course, we can run searches. Uh, here's the book info. So you can go in here and get your uh, book information, read the uh, reviews, or hit the lend me button if you want to lend it to someone. Okay, so some of the other options in here. We've got the table of contents, which also uh, will list your notes and highlights and your bookmark sections. So we can bring up the different text options. So we've got uh, these eight different font sizes, and we've also got these three different options for margins and line spacing. So if you want the smaller margins, which typically I do, and then we go ahead and change the different font types. So with the high-res screen, the smaller text, it definitely looks really, really good. It's really crisp and clear. And then we've also got these different background colors. So if you like different background colors, you've got the different theme options. I tend to go with the off-white one right here. So uh, it's got two-page landscape mode, which looks pretty good on the big screen. It's also got the uh, animated page turns. So the older Nooks didn't have the animated page turns. But the Nook apps did. I could never understand why their devices didn't have the animated page turns. But so now the Nook HD tablets do have that. Um, one thing about this, though, I mean, it does not turn pages fast at all. It's like seriously, you can turn pages faster on the uh, e-ink Nook than you can on the tablet. I never understood the concept of that. I mean, why, I don't know why the page turns are so slow. But um, if it were an e-ink e-reader, they'd be people would be giving it a bunch of flack for being so slow page turns. But it's a tablet, so nobody mentions it. It's kind of odd. All right, so you can add bookmarks if you tap that icon up there. And then we can also have the usual on-screen adjusting options, or the on-screen uh, uh, options. So like you can add notes and highlights. If you hold down on a word, highlights, notes. You can uh, bring up the dictionary. You can also run searches on Google and Wikipedia from right there. And then we can also share these social networks. You can run searches, uh, which works it right here. Okay, so one of the big selling points this year with Barnes & Noble is they're talking about is they have these different Nook profiles. So, like when you turn a device on, you got the option to select a profile. Uh, and with each profile, you can set it up exactly how you want it. So let me go ahead and show you that other profile real quick. And it's got a completely different uh, home screen layout, different background. So you can basically just uh, customize everything how you want with your different profiles. So BNN are uh, marketing it as a, like a family tablet. So you can uh, have up to six profiles on this device at one time. And that way you can have a bunch of different people using it and also kids. So they've got different kid profiles. And then uh, with the kid profiles, they're a lot more limited as far as the content goes. You can go in and specify... Uh, exactly what books you want the kids to have access to. So like if we go in the apps here, all we have is that because I didn't specify any uh, other than that. So we can go in, we've hardly got anything in here because I didn't specify exactly what content the kids could have. Automatically, like the kids books are going to show up 
and a few other things. But uh, you pretty much have to go in and specify everything exactly that you want to show up for the kid's profile. Uh, one thing I noticed is stuff on the SD card isn't even an option. So uh, as far as side-loaded content goes, it, uh, yeah, it's not even an option for uh, kid profiles. And then we can go ahead and create different profiles just by going in there. You can't be in the kid profile, obviously. So then we can add the different profiles. And you can set up different preferences. So like what, what kind of uh, recommended titles you get here based on your reading preferences. So it's sort of all set up to uh, be accommodating for multiple users. So my biggest gripe with the Nook HD, of course, is just the limited amount of apps that we have access to. So this is pretty much like, um, these are pretty much all free apps. I don't buy apps from Barnes & Noble because the problem with buying apps from Barnes & Noble is they are only going to work on a Nook device now and in the future. Uh, so like if you buy apps with like a Nexus 7, I mean it's going to work with any Android device you buy uh, in the future and every Android device you have right now that supports the Google app market. So I mean when you buy apps from Barnes & Noble obviously it limits you to just Barnes & Noble and then uh, as far as the apps go I mean there just is not a very good selection uh, and you're pretty much going to have to pay for everything. I mean even a calculator, you're going to have to pay for a calculator. You're not going to find uh, like the free kind of apps that you're going to find on other platforms. So I was kind of surprised. I mean there's not even really any high-end games at all. They're all just sort of like basic games. So definitely, uh, the Nook definitely isn't uh, what you consider a gaming tablet because I mean the high-end games don't even get on here. They're mostly just like Angry Birds, that type of games. Um, you know, uh, Fruit Ninja, that type of stuff. You don't really have any high-end type of uh, games that are going to push the performance of the processor or the graphics. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review right here. I know I didn't cover all the details, but go ahead and check out uh, my uh, written review here over on theebookreader.com. I got this really long review. I covered a lot more details in it. And I also covered some other ar articles recently, like uh, 10 must-have free apps for the Nook HD and Nook HD+. Plus. And there's also this other article that shows you how to sideload apps on the Nook without rooting it if you want to. Uh, it's pretty complicated, but I mean, it is possible. So uh, check out that for some additional information. And I'll also be posting some additional rooting guides because I really want to get the Google Play on this because now it's going to open it up to a lot more functionality than it currently has. So uh, check that out on theebookreader.com. And thank you for watching.